Yo, Elliot, I have made the mistake of backsliding a bit on my walk with God, and I lost consistency. I now realize there is no gray area I have business in trying to walk around in. I'm either going all in with the light or not. Do you have any advice on how to grow a deeper relationship with Christ and avoid ever backsliding again? There's also this sense of not feeling God as much as before. And I want to know more than ever is, is to do, the thi do things right and feel his presence in my life. Okay, a few things here I want to address. Um, backsliding is going to happen. Backsliding will always happen. You're riding on a bumpy road on the back of a truck and you don't have a seatbelt. That's life. You're going to fall off sometimes. Everybody falls off sometimes. The difference between a sinner and a saint is that the sinner knows he's going to fall off and he's always repentful of his sins. Even when he doesn't even know that he's doing them, he's remorseful. He's re not only he's remorseful, but he has contrition. He has contrition. Pray the act of contrition constantly. Const and this is why the Jesus prayer, the prayer of the heart is so important. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Rip the... The ancients would repeat that prayer 3,000 times a day. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a poor sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, a poor sinner. And so you're doing a number of things there when you find that you fall off or that you're sinning or that even venial sins of your mind, you're, you're, you're humbling yourself and saying, I know I'm not perfect. I'm a sinner. When you don't know that you're a sinner, that's when you're really in trouble. Bishop Barron put it this way one day when it comes to the difference between a sinner and a saint. A sinner is like somebody who's driving in a car, right? Well, let me put it this way. A saint, I'll do it the other way around. A saint is somebody when you're driving in the car and you ever notice when you're driving towards the sun, say the sun is rising and you're, you're, you're facing the light in your car and your windshields and you look through your windshield and you can see all the spatters and all the marks and all the spit from your talking and stuff and you can see all the nastiness on the, on the, through the windshield. A sinner is somebody who's oriented towards the light so that they can see ooh, 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 all the nastiness of my sinfulness. And so that's why a saint is always asking for forgiveness. It might sound so strange when you read the lives of these saints, but they were always feeling contrition. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I'm going to give you another prayer here in a moment that I think is very important for you. It's called Divine Mercy. I think everyone needs to know about Divine Mercy. I'm not going to do too much of a lesson, but I'm going to share with you a powerful little prayer for Divine Mercy. And so a person who is driving in the same car at another time, say, but the sun is behind him. He's driving you know, into the shadows. He's driving into the dark. He don't see all the smudge marks on his, on his windshield. Did you ever notice that? You ever notice when you're facing the light, you see all the marks. When you turn away from the light, you don't see any of the marks. So the person that's not complaining about their backsliding, like you, but, but you're going about it in an unresourceful way. You're, you're aware, but I'm going to give you a different way to deal with it. The person who's like, I'm fine. I'm going to heaven because I'm a good person. God loves me just the way I am, right? Somebody who's got that sort of attitude, who takes for granted God's mercy and it's, and it's, not, it's not guaranteed to anyone. I don't care. And I know a lot of Protestants argue with me. Oh, but as long as you say these magic words, you're saved. Nah, mm, 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 mm. Don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Jesus says, be perfect like my father in heaven. And he says... He goes on in a certain way where he basically says, you have to be 
perfect to be with my father in heaven. It means free from smudges. You can't say no magic word that's going to remove those smudges, but you know what you can do? Rather than being so proud about your being saved, have contrition. Have a sense of humility. Feel some sense of shame, guilt. A lot of people will say, oh, Elliot, I used to be Catholic, but I'm not Catholic anymore because there's too much guilt and shame. And I say, damn right. There should be guilt and shame because you got a dirty windshield and you try to pretend like it's not. But the minute you turn it towards somebody who's, sh who's shedding light on it, they're going to point out, hey, you're not okay. <laughs> you're not okay. You should be a little ashamed right now. But not to beat yourself up or not for that person to beat you up or for the church to hold some standards so that you feel small and low. No. So that you can repent. And you could ask God for mercy. Satan wants you to say to yourself that I need to go all in and be perfect because he knows that that's going to feed your ego. Whenever you saying that I'm going to be perfect rather than God, please send your Holy Spirit to guide my steps this day and forgive me for every and anything I did wrong. When you, when, you, when you have that attitude, as opposed to, I'm going to do it. I'm never going to sin again. I'm going I'm, 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 I'm to drive this hard-nosed attitude, and I'm going to beat myself up. That's Satan, bro. That's Satan doing that to you. God, God offers divine mercy. And so let me, let, me, let me share this with you, too. This picture here is called the divine mercy. And there's a Divine Mercy chaplet. There's a whole story about the Divine Mercy painting. And there are Divine Mercy prayers all created by Sister Faustina. And you can look up. Sister Faustina. Beautiful story. And as a Christian, you have these beautiful prayers. You have the Jesus prayer. You, have, you also have reconciliation. Now, it's not so easy today because... A lot of parishes don't, they have reconciliation, they have confession like once a week on a Saturday. I know mine does. And, 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 and it's sort of a chastisement. It's sort of a chastisement God has laid upon us by giving us weak parishes and weak priests and no sacraments. God pulls his, pulls his, his sacredness away from us when we sin this much. And so we, gotta, we kind of suffer. But... Towards the beginning of, around the early, the world wars, when, you know, this is when everything started escalating in the most diabolical ways. There's a story of a, a, a I think she was a German priest, a German um, nun named Saint, I think it was Anne Faustina, something Faustina. And she had some revelations, and Catholics do believe in, in uh, the perpetual continuous revelation that God never stops talking to us and he, and he reveals certain things that are um, affirmed as real revelations or or uh, rejected as fake revelations because you know people come up with all kinds of crazy stuff so the church does investigations into certain revelations or what would be referred to as apparitions and so this is a this is a, 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 conf a firm apparition uh, that she received these revelations from Jesus himself and what you see right there that in that picture is Jesus coming to this girl to deliver this message knowing that we're about to go into a era of chaos, rampant sin, rampant pride, rampant drug use, rampant pornography, promiscuity, destruction of the family. We're living through it. We're living in hell right now. In every aspect of our lives, we're basically ruled by Satan. And even in the Old Testament, David says in Psalm 51 something to the effect of, Lord, have mercy on me. I was born in the sin of my mother's womb. Basically, like, what can I do? I'm born into this generation. It would have been easier to be a, sin, uh, to be a saint in, say, in the Middle Ages, <laughs> right? But I can't help myself. And God knows that you can't help yourself. It doesn't free, it doesn't, it doesn't free you from the responsibility of investigation into the truth but he affords us a lot of grace 
as a result of knowing, hey, this guy's living during a really tough time. Let me give him some grace. Let me give him some mercy. Mercy. God is merciful. Jesus is merciful. And so what you see here in this picture is blood and water that is coming out of his heart, which is, which is symbolic of the blood and water that came out of the, his side on, at Calvary when he was stabbed with the um, spear, uh, you know, to make sure he was dead. Blood and water sprayed out. And if you ever watched the movie Passion of Christ, you know, sprayed all, all over Mary's face and, and John. And what was revealed to Faustina was that this blood and water was, was gushing forth for the salvation of souls. And so there's a little bit of, there's a little prayer that I, it's a mantra, it's a prayer. I repeat it to myself often because I'm a sinner. I, I, I fail. I fall off. I backslide like you say. But I know I'm falling off. I don't beat myself up. And I invoke the divine mercy that God has revealed, revealed for us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a source of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a source of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a source of mercy for us, I trust in you. So there you have evidence that God is not wanting to hurt you or, 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 or make your life miserable. It's Satan that does that. And that God wants to give you ample opportunity to receive his mercy through the act of his son and the blood and water which gush forth. as a source of mercy for us. And it ends with what's most important and is important for you. I trust in you. Trust, trust in Jesus' sacrifice. Trust in Jesus washing us with blood and water, washing us of our sins. If you understand what blood represents and what water represents in the Bible, it's amazing. But, but this blood is, an, is, is a is symbolic of the blood that the Israel, what do you call them? Israelites, right? I don't know if they're actually Jews. I have, con I have strange convictions about that. But Israel in, uh, in the land of Pharaoh, right, in Egypt, God told them to put blood sacrifice a lamb put blood on your doorstep and it will protect you from evil it will come and they, but they will not come and attack you because you're 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 protected by the blood of the of the sacrifice christ is that sacrifice his blood protects us right and so you can invoke the blood of jesus christ as your protection and and the washing which represents baptism and rebirth and so that's a, that's a form of mercy and protection for you. Definitely go and when you can, if you can, receive absolution. Go and confess your sins. Um, but trust in God's mercy. And as a result, you'll be light. And when you're light, you're agile. And when you're agile, you can just keep moving. Hey, I backslide. Think about somebody who's backslide. I'm sliding down my back. What does an agile person do? Whoop, flips up and gets back up. Whoop, I'm sliding. Whoop, get up and get back up. But if you're heavy, think about if you're heavy, you're weighed down. You ain't flipping back up. Christ is the light that lightens you up. You even use that word. I either go all in with the light or not. Be light. Be light. If you backslide, it's very easy to float back up. Be light about it.